Welcome, everyone. Um, with this technology, you know how it goes. Some days it works perfect, and some days you just have to learn and make adjustments. So I'm grateful that we made an adjustment and we are ready to go as we celebrate the winners on this afternoon for our essay contest, both winners of Black History Month as well as Hispanic Heritage Month. And I am so thrilled to have the winners with us on this, on this afternoon. And you'll meet with them in a moment. Their essays were chosen from over 70 excellent submissions. And so it was very hard to choose these four winners. We were inspired by their passion and commitment to their communities that they demonstrated in their writing skills. Now we had originally planned to hold this event in person, but as you can imagine, those plans like so many others have had to change because of this pandemic. But there was no way that we were not going to come together and recognize the outstanding work of these students and their plans for the future. Because even now, when there is so much uncertainty in the world, we can be certain that these students have very bright futures. So now I'd like to introduce our winners. I'm going to start with our second place winner for Hispanic Heritage Month essay contest. And on today we have Giovanni Vieta Alvarez, who lives in Little Village, actually not far from where I live, and attends Spry Community Links High School. So we are so excited and say congratulations to Yavani, and we welcome her at this time. Uh, hello. Um, uh, thank you. Um, I am I'm him, actually. The first place winner of the Hispanic Heritage Month is Abel Almanza, who lives in South Chicago and attends Carver Military High School. All right. Hey, thank you for introducing me. Great. And the second place winner of the Black History Month essay contest is Ayana Gross who lives in West Chesterfield and attends Kenwood High School. Say hello, Ayana. Hi. And first place for Black History Month contest, we have on the line Tyler Smith, and we would like for him, did I, wait, is it Tyler Smith? Did I say it? There you go. Um, we would like for Hi, him everybody. to say hello at this time. Hi. At this time, we are going to turn it over to Michelle Howard. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Michelle Howard, and I serve as the scholarship manager for Chicago Public Schools. On behalf of Dr. Jackson, our CEO, and uh, Ms. Latanya McDade, who's our Chief Education Officer, we just want to say we are so proud of each of you for taking the time to really do what was necessary to win this scholarship. We certainly want to thank uh, City Treasurer Kanye Irvin for continuing to allow this scholarship and not dropping the ball on this um, once she moved into office. And not only did she continue to bring this scholarship, but she expanded this opportunity for our students. So we are so appreciative of this partnership. We are so proud of our students. Um, we know that you deserve this money. Um, what's specific about this scholarship is that it requires an essay, but it's no GPA, no ACT, no test scores. It is all about writing and providing your story and answering that question. So we thank you for having the foresight um, to know that this was a phenomenal opportunities for our students. And thank you again to each of our students for taking advantage. We're so proud of you. We know um, that you are hard workers, and we know that you plan to give back, not just to your communities, but our city as a whole with whatever it is that you decide to do in your next steps in life. So continue to lean on us as your school district. We're here to support you. We are in your corner. And again, thank you to our great city treasurer for this opportunity for our students. Thank you so much, Ms. Howard. Um, I really commend you and all the, all of the 
staff, administrators, and teachers, and assistants, everyone, you name it, at CPS. And of course, to Dr. Jackson, um, say hello to her, and just thank you all for the support that you have provided to the students. And um, at this time, I would like to introduce Eric Smith, who is the Vice Chair of BMO Harris. And um, as the CEO would tell me, it's not BMO, he says that if your family is BMO. And so BMO, BMO Harris is an unwavering supporter of Chicago's communities at all times, but especially during this pandemic. And they gener generously, and we appreciate it, they sponsored this essay contest. And Eric, really thank you for joining us today and thank you for your commitment to these students. Thank you, uh, Treasurer. Uh, it's an honor to be with you and congratulations to the participants. I can't think of a better way to spend a Friday, Friday afternoon uh, recognizing uh, the tremendous uh, students that are represented here uh, and their hard work. Um, I'd like to especially acknowledge our Treasurer uh, and to uh, Michelle Howard and those that are at CPS for their tireless efforts and working uh, with the students in the program that we're, we're offering, um, particularly during a time like this when you take time out to focus on diversity and inclusion and recognizing the tremendous success of our students. Um, there's no small task and we thank you all for participating. Um, I know that these are incredible times that we're experiencing right now. And my colleagues and I at BMO were so happy to sponsor uh, these scholarships um, we do this because diversity is a core value of, uh, of what we stand for at BMO Harris. And so the timing of this contest, uh, which comes during uh, Black History Month and Hispanic uh, Heritage Month, uh, really appealed to us in a big way. Um, obviously, the way that we're doing this is a little bit different than what we had intended to do in person. But nevertheless, it's extremely important that we be able to connect with you and to celebrate and recognize each and every one of you. I'm the dad of two daughters and my youngest daughter is a senior in high school. And so I know how difficult this year is for, uh, for students uh, to know that your hard work for the last four years uh, is recognized. And this is the opportunity that we want to do that. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to make sure that I can share with you is that I, I know I speak on behalf of uh, Treasurer uh, Conyers Irvin is that we hope that uh, you may aspire to be one day become a, a city treasurer or to become a banker or a vice chairman at BMO Harris. And so I'm gonna share with you a little bit of what BMO Harris is doing uh, during this uh, pandemic uh, in hopes that it will give you an opportunity to think about things that you can do in your career, because these are the types of things that I get to do on a regular basis that make me very excited about getting up in the morning. Uh, but BMO Harris uh, has been part of Chicago for over 160 years. Uh, and if you're part of the community, um, you need to make sure that you're part of the solution. And that's something that we truly believe. We're offering relief to consumers and small businesses right now, including payment deferrals on credit cards and home equity loans and uh, small business loans. And that's something that's very important to people that have lost their jobs and that are struggling right now. Um, furthermore, we fulfilled financial hardship requests for more than 20,000 customers, uh, granting deferrals for over a billion dollars in loans to families and individuals. And we're also very pleased to, to support small businesses. And we've secured approval for over four and a half billion dollars in funding to more than 10,000 borrowers during the first round of the Small Business Administration's Paycheck Protection Program. And that's something that, again, that many of you guys may aspire to be small business owners at some point. Um, and I think it's helpful that you understand uh, some of those types of things that the banking community does. So with that said, I'd like to really focus on what's most important. And again, that's celebrating your success. And I had a chance to read uh, the winning essays and they were very, very thoughtful and very well written. And so Abel, Ayana, uh, Yavani, and Tyler, congratulations. Um, you were all spectacular, and I feel really positive that our future is in good hands, uh, knowing that we have dynamic young leaders like you. Tyler, I was particularly touched uh, by your tribute to your very entrepreneurial great-grandfather, and I hope that his life and legacy will continue to be an inspiration to you uh, for many years to come. I'm thrilled that the scholarship money that you'll each receive will go towards the cost of attending uh, your first year in college, 
And so we know it's going to be uh, used uh, for good purposes. And we hope that you will stay in touch with us and keep us apprised of your developments and your success. And more importantly, to let us know if we can ever be of assistance to you. And with that, I'll end by saying congratulations again and best of luck to you uh, in college. Uh, we look forward to hearing great things about your future. Thank you, Eric. And I'll tell you, um, <laughs> I feel like you, you were just the keynote speaker at a graduation, to be quite honest with you. Uh, that was phenomenal. Those words were very encouraging, and I believe not only to the students on the line, but those of us that are adults on the line as well. So thank you for those encouraging words. And they are definitely needed, especially during this time. So thank you, Eric, and to the team members of BMO for your support. And um, now we'd like to get to know our winners a little bit better. And so I am excited. This was like the most exciting point for me when I was looking at the layout of today and I saw that we were going to hear from our youth on this afternoon. So at this time, I am going to start with you, Tyler. We're gonna ask you a few questions and um, kind of picking back on what Eric mentioned that you wrote about your great grandfather, Ralph yep. Mitchell. And Ralph was an entrepreneur in the music business. And it's interesting because we're talking about music and I'm looking at you, you have your headphones on, you are ready to go. Can you tell us a little bit about your great grandfather, Mr. Mitchell, and um, why you were inspired by his life and work? Well, I was inspired by my grandpa because he found a way to connect his like passions with family. And I just thought that it was like respectable that he never let one conflict with another. And so like, it just showed to me that he cared more about others than himself. That's awesome. Well, when you talk about your great grandfather and his footsteps and how you want to create sustainable wealth in your community, that, that, that nugget right there is a mouthful, sustainable wealth in your community. Why is that important to you, Tyler? Well, in my neighborhood, it's like, it's a lot of people that are stuck in the system and there's like not enough good examples of entrepreneurs and support systems to help people like overcome economic boundaries. So like my goals, one of my, one of my like goals right now is I plan on buying a building before I graduate college. And so with my dad's help, he's a retired carpenter. He's gonna help me like rehab it and stuff. And I plan on like helping people in the community learn how to do it themselves as well. All right, what community do you live in, Tyler? I live in North Lawndale. North Lawndale, right down the street from me on the west side of Chicago as well. Very good, Tyler. And I want to make mention of something that you stated. Um, and by the way, Tyler, you, you live in North Lawndale, but you attend Kenwood on the great south side. Is that correct? Yep. All right, great. Um, I want to make mention of something that you stated. Your dad is a carpenter by trade. And so it's amazing how all of this can work together. You said that before you complete college, you want to purchase a building in your community. And we're going to hold you to that, Tyler, because we want you all, you are the type of people that we want to be our neighbors. So when you go off to college, don't forget about us. Don't leave us. You know, we want you all to be great people. And certainly you can be great people that have a great influence on the community that you live in. So finally, Tyler, what college do you plan to attend after high school? I'm going to Columbia College, Chicago, and I plan on majoring in um, music technology and minoring in music. Very good. All right, Tyler. Well, thank you. It was so great um, talking with you on this afternoon, and, and we are just so impressed and wish, wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you. Now, Ayana. We are moving on to Ayana, which I understand um, is another one of our Kenwood graduates. Is that correct? Yes. So Ayana, you wrote about someone who's been very influential here in the Chicago 
tech community and the civic community, being Neil Sales Griffin. Interesting. Can you tell us why you were inspired to write about Neil? I was inspired to write about Neil because I believe that the program Code Now that he founded is absolutely incredible. Um, code now focuses on teaching young, young students of color how to code and providing them with essential skills to succeed in the workforce. What's the impact on, of coding programs like code now in your community? And by the way, what could, you're in what community, Ayana? West Chesterfield, correct? Yes. Okay. Tell us how the impact of coding programs like code now can have on your community? Um, Code Now is impacting hundreds of students and it is exposing them to different career paths that they weren't necessarily aware of and emerging them into a program that is focusing, focused on helping them succeed. Okay, excellent. And where do you plan to attend college, Ayana? I'm going to Morgan State University and I'm majoring in medical technology. Wow, tell everyone what Morgan State is. It's in Baltimore in Maryland. All right. You're traveling a little distance, Ayana. We wish you well. Ayana, I'm from Baltimore, and my mother is a graduate of Morgan. Wow. So you're great. attending a great school. Thank you. Small world, right? All right. Now we are going to move to Abel. Hi, Abel. You wrote about wanting to stay, wanting to open an early childhood education institution in your community. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Tell us about your essay and why you were inspired to write about it. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I was inspired to write about the essay, obviously because where I'm from, like I want to major in education. And where I'm from, we don't really have a good education system for like, preschoolers and kindergartners, I feel like that's a base for how you're going to be in the future. Like, that's your introduction into the classroom. So I feel like that was really beneficial to a community like ours, especially where most of the kids in there are minorities. And we're already coming with a stigma behind us that we don't know how to act. We're, you know, ghetto. So I feel like we, I wanted one that would help us build, you know, some better communication skills and, you know, establish our education before going into, like, further. And what community do you live in, Abel? I'm from South Chicago in the bush. Yeah. All right. And what school do you attend now? I attend Carver Military Academy. All right. Very well. Now, we can see that education is clearly important to you. Can you tell us about a particular educator who had a strong impact on your life and why? I love questions like this. Me too. I get asked this question a lot, actually, and my answer is always like really controversial for some reason. But I say a teacher that had an impact on my life that was really strong was my teacher, Ms. Harris. I still got her. And the reason I say that is because she taught me everything I don't want to be in a teacher. So she really, like, set the base for me to, like, understand that I don't want to have the same traits that she does. Because she's, like, one of the teachers who just gives the worst she and that's it. Like, you can't do that with people who are coming from different places of the world. Like, we have people who are Black, white, Mexican, gay, straight. You can't just, oh, have a worksheet. There's certain people that you need to tend to in specific ways. So she's one of the teachers that always inspired me because I just see some of the stuff she does, and I'm like, yeah, not me. I, I would never do that because I know how it feels when it happens. That's awesome. That's awesome, Abel. Um, and what college do you plan on attending? Um, I plan on attending the University of Illinois at Chicago, majoring in secondary education, obviously, with a focus in English literature, and I want a minor in creative writing. I have to say that's great, Abel. Nowadays, we don't hear a lot of people that want to major in education, secondary education, 
So I can really appreciate um, your desire to do that. And we know that as I just asked you that question about an educator that had a major influence on you, it is National Teacher Appreciation Week. So what a great question and a great answer that you provided, Abel. Thank you, Thank congratulations, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, I wish you guys the best of luck. So at this time, we are going to move to Yavani. I think Yavani is our final student on this day. And Yavani, you wrote about the type of business you would like to start in your community of Little Village. Little Village is not far. Okay, sorry, you all. This is my daughter now as we're working from home. Okay. Okay. Um, Yavani, can you tell us what inspired you to write about the type of business that you want to start in your community and Little Village and why? Uh, well, what inspired me um, was that I used to have a part-time job, and I would see a lot of homeless people around that area which made me realize how many um, homeless people I see around my community, especially because Little Village consists of many low-income families, which means most of us don't have enough to give back to them, which is why I came up with this idea, because um, that way I will be able to provide something back to them. Four. Okay, that is awesome, everybody. Is there someone in your life who inspired you? Hold on one second, everyone, please. All right, thank you everyone for your patience um, because I want to make certain that we have um, everyone's undivided attention when we're acknowledging our winners on today. So, Yavani, I wanted to ask a follow up question. Is there someone in your life who you want to, um, you could say, who inspired you that really makes you to want to become an entrepreneur? Like, what did you learn from that person and who was it? Um, that's the thing. Um, I don't personally know any, like anyone, um, but many small business owners and um, I want to be an inspiration to my community and hope that others will learn how to get back. And small business owners, by the way, Yovani, and I'm glad that you mentioned small business owners because especially in underserved communities like the south and west sides of Chicago, small businesses truly are the backbone of, of our community. And so I can appreciate your appreciation for small businesses. And myself as city treasurer, my, my staff and I, we work very diligently in trying to help small businesses. So great response, Yvonne. Now, finally, where do you plan to attend college and what do you want to study? Um, where I where I want to plan to attend college is either Malcolm X or Hill Washington, and right now I am undecided. Uh, however, I am leaning towards something towards arts. Very good. Well, we wish you well. Congratulations on your award, and and we wish you well with your continued education. Now we're going to switch it up a bit this afternoon, and we are going to have our students interview our two special guests. Joining us today is Mr. Daniel Rogers, who is CEO of AM Money, a Chicago-based company that helps high-achieving students access affordable student loans so that they can complete college. We also have Ms. O'Day Taylor, who is a managing director of Persistence at One Goal, which is a teacher-led organization that inspires low-income students to reach their full potential and graduate from college. So, Abel, can you kick us off with our round of questions for our guests? You know I can. So, um, welcome, Daniel. Thank you for being here. Um, so I know young people in our like environment in Illinois and around the world, they are interested in 
combining entrepreneurship with social missions. So can you tell us your personal story of how you came about and how you got inspired for money? Sure, absolutely. Um, first of all, I uh, would like to wish all of you the best of luck on this journey that you're doing. And um, for me in our organization, like, it, like it's all about helping people uh, like on their pathway through college. And a big part of that are the challenges that I had struggling to pay for college and having to work full-time jobs and do all sorts of kind of kind of crazy things just to kind of get through. And so for me, the driving animus for everything is always trying to think about uh, what are the products um, that we can give or what are the services that we can provide that I as a student um, struggling to pay for college would have liked to have or would have liked to see. And so a big part of like, like, the company is just built around that. And so it, it, it includes how we approach every student, how we approach every problem and like how we approach everything that we do. And it's just a big part of who we are. Thank you. Um, okay. So I'm interested in education as well as many of the other students here. And we, can't always pay for it, especially like, you know, people who are first generation college students like myself. So my next question would be, what advice would you have for high school seniors who don't meet that financial requirements to go to college? Like how can they be helped and what could get them to college basically? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, as I kind of alluded to, I also struggled to pay for college um, and uh, so a part of how I managed everything was I actually joined the army out of high school, which, um, to pause for a second, I also went to Kenwood. And so it's great to see other Broncos here, um, like as a part of this process. But, um, so like I joined army because it was a way for me to kind of, um, provide for my family while being able to go to college at the same time. And so while I was on active duty, um, like I actually completed my first two years of college while I was in. And I would say the best advice I can give um, is to have a good plan, right? And to, and the power of the plan is not just, you know, knowing everything that you have to do if everything goes right, but it's also gives you an insight and an ability to adjust when things don't work out the, way in which you want it to. And so like, you know, one short story on that is that um, I reached a point in the army in which I was done, right? Like I had completed my time and like I was all set to transfer to college in DC. Um, like the timing though know, was wrong in that the Iraq war had just started. And so all of you were two or three years old or I don't actually want to know how old you were, but the army told me at the time, well, hey, too bad about college, you have to go to Iraq instead. And obviously I wasn't too happy about that. My mom was less than happy about that, um, we can call it, but I had a good plan. And so what that plan allowed me to do was because I had mapped out all of the courses I knew I had to take, um, I was able to go to a community college in like the place I was stationed and convinced them to let me take online courses while I was deployed. And so while I was in Iraq and doing my job and everything else, I was able to knock out about seven of the courses I needed to take to graduate from college while I was there. And the power of that was that of course, it allowed me to stay on track to graduate. Um, but it also saved me a lot of money too, right? Because like every single course I took the army paid for, and so, you know, how I thought about it was like every course I completed was $8,000, $12,000, however much it was that I wouldn't have to pay after I got out. And all of that really just stemmed from having that plan. And, and, and so the best advice I can give is to, you know, be very intentional about that plan and like be very flexible about that as well. Thank you for speaking and sharing. Some wonderful information to 
I'm sure we could use it when we go to college. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ayana now. So thank you. Hey, thank, thank you, you Abel. Ms. Taylor, can you tell us about the mission of One Goal and how it works to put students on a path to graduate college? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so One Goal is a leading college access um, and success organization that works really close to um, works to close the degree divide that we're seeing in our country and provide a more equitable future for our students. Um, we partner with many schools across the city of Chicago, at least 60 right now, to ensure that like post-secondary planning um, and preparation and support are not just like extracurricular luxuries, but rather um, integral components of your high school experience. Um, One Goal is a three-year program, and so we're actually in um, the high schools that you guys are in as well. Um, and we start in a student's junior year and we work with them in their senior year. And then I think the most critical part um, is that we continue to support that student through that first year post-secondary because we know that is a really, really critical time, um, especially as you're going through a lot of new things. Um, and so we continue to provide programming and you're continuing to get the support of One Goal through that first year so that whatever path you are choosing to take, um, you have the supports um, necessary and the, and, the, and the networks and the access you need um, to, to do that and do that to your highest aspiration. What role does community play in a student successfully reaching graduation? And how can a student harness the power of community to reach their goal? I, I love this question. Community is actually one of um, our core values. Um, and we recognize that um, our community is only gonna thrive um, with us and we thrive with our communities. Um, and so we believe that like the combined perspectives, stories, talents, passions um, of everybody that makes up a community um, is, is what we have to harness and what we have to value. Um, and, and we know that like, we, we, we know that we are connected to our communities and we are a part of like how we, who we are is a part of, you know, our community and our communities are what they are because we are in them. Um, we spend a lot of time um, in the high schools still working with students and, and like thinking about and talking about our identities, our communities, um, and like how they add value to each other um, and, and what our place is in our world and, and how we see ourselves and how we drive forward. So we know that it is incredibly important um, and we really actually support students in thinking about how they continue that community and, and grow their network so when they are in that first year post-secondary however they're taking form whether it's you know in person um it's it's a traditional four-year two-year school or a different path or even a virtual one right like you never know it could be a virtual one online that we're finding the places um where you find connection and you're growing that community so you're staying connected and grounded um wherever you are Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Now I'll turn it over to Tyler. Thanks, Diana. All right, Mr. Rogers, um, what students are eligible to apply for student loans through AME? Um, good question. And so typically what we look at is the progress performance that you have uh, in college. And so what we do is look at how much of the program you've completed um, the grades that you have in that program. And then like in some cases, the quality of the institution and in others, um, other factors which might influence all of those things. And so like a great example is, you know, progress towards a certain type of career. Um, I know like as one example, um, CPS has a great program to help people from Chicago become educators in CPS and like uh, we look closely at programs like that to kind of help us in our assessment of the students and to kind of quantify just all the work that has gone into helping uh, that has gone into you going from point A to point B. Tyler, did you have a follow-up question? We can't hear you. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, my, my connection is unstable. 
But um, my second question is, in your experience, what are some factors that make students successful, not just graduating from college, but also paying off loans, which we know can become a burden? Yeah, so it's a great question. And so um, a few things I would say, right? So uh, one I've already kind of talked about, like, like in the vein of having a plan and being very intentional about that plan. And the thing I would add to that is that that's not just for the college success in terms of the classes you have to take and the grades you're going to get, but also with everything that happens afterwards. And so being very thoughtful around what types of experiences, what type of connections and like what types of skills are required to kind of take that next step and making sure that's incorporated into a plan is like a huge thing. And that intentionality will serve you well in everything you want to do. Um, Two, I would say like being open to asking for help is a big thing that can really help you be successful. And so in the story I told about having a plan and, you know, like not going to college, but going to Iraq, one of the things I did is that I actually called up the college counselor at the college I was going to, right? And I wasn't enrolled as a student, like, you know, I hadn't sent them a dime. It wasn't that person's job to do anything for me, but I still called them up and said, can you help me with my plan? Right. And like, ask them to tell me like what I was missing, like, you know, help me make sure that the classes I plan to take at this other college would transfer back. And so I wasn't having to repeat classes and take a step back. And all of that just kind of stemmed from just being willing to kind of like ask those questions. Right. And, you know, um, like when you do that, you'll find that a lot of people are willing to go out of their way to kind of enable you to be successful. And you can't be ashamed of that. And you can't be shy about that. Like you have to be willing to do it. And, and like, I would say lastly, and very related to that is that you, you, absolutely have to advocate for yourself, right? And so, you know, in that same story, my army leadership was not happy with my plan, right? Because to them, it was going to be a distraction, you know, like we're going to Iraq, we have to, you know, do the things that we have to do to like come back home alive. And like in their mind, um, me going to college wasn't important to them, right? But it was important to me and I didn't care what they thought, right? And so, I went above them and I went up the chain of command and long story short, I forced them to let me take those classes and I forced them to pay for it. Right. And you can't be shy about advocating for yourself as you go through this, because while there are tons of people and tons of organizations from the treasurer's office to CPS to one goal who are going to help you, like not always is, like are people going to go out of their way or to give you the right information? And you can't be shy about going for what you need and asking people for it. And again, that's the thing that, you know, the sooner you can learn that, the better off you'll be because that will serve you well in college, just the same as it will in business and careers and entrepreneurship for sure and everything else. All right, thank you. Now I'll turn it over to Giovanni for the last questions. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Ms. Taylor, your organization um, works with high school and college students to put them on a path for success in college. What about students who are not at the beginning of high school, maybe sophomores or juniors, and have realized that they want to work hard to get into college but are worried that it's too late? Um, well, Giovanni, I would, I would say it's never too late. It's, it's literally never too late. Um, and I mean, it might mean that you have to work harder. Uh, that might mean that your path getting to where, whatever it is you're choosing is where you want to be. Might not uh, originally look the way or look the way you envisioned originally. And, and you might have to take a couple different paths. But, it, it, but it's never, ever going to be too late for you to um, to dream and decide and make a choice for what you want for your life. The next thing is just really committing to it and, and doing the work to, to get there. Um, I know like for myself, I'm like a, some of you guys had mentioned a first generation 
college student. I'm a first generation high school graduate. So that, that was already the big accomplishment um, of my family was that I graduated high school because it was I was the first one. Um, and so, you know, I didn't have the, the, the necessarily the model of like, this is how you do it. Here's, here's the path that you're going to take. And here's what it looks like. There was a lot of trying to figure it out. Um, but I leaned on, you know, my community and mentors that helped me just the way, just in the same way I do now with young people um, and went to a community college um, and got a two-year degree and then transferred to a four-year school um, and, and did that 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 entire process in four years as as you know college is designed so you know we start working um with one goal we start working in students junior years and i think that's kind of the around the, the year that you're saying um we're talking about like what happens if you're in a junior already you don't have a lot of time but the point is you still have time um, and with dedication and commitment and like working with your program director that we have or any teacher or any mentor to figure out what can I do? How might I increase my opportunities to, to change my options, to increase uh, where I could potentially go? Um, and then like figure out that path, just like um, Dan said, you know, it's, it's like having a plan and then committing to it. And, and like where you're ending up is what you're committing to. And so how you get there kind of matters a little bit less. It's the fact that you get there that matters most. So have that plan, work with people, let, lean into your communities. And the people on this call are saying, you know, like, hey, come back, let us know what you need. We're here from you. Like, that is an awesome thing to, to hear from Mr. Smith from BMO. Like, those are the types of people you want to keep in your, in your network, in your community, so that you can be reminded, like, when something does come up and you are interested or you are a junior or a senior and you're like, hey, there's a really cool internship opportunity. I want to check that out. You advocate for yourself to do that. So I would say it's never, never, ever too late in the path that you take is your path and it's going to be great and it's going to make you who you are and uh, you're going to be a lot better for it on the other side but what's most important is that you you know where it is you want to go and you're invested to get there um, and then you leverage your you leverage your community along the way um, and if you do go to Harold Washington Giovanni our office is literally across the street so we'll make sure uh, we connect and uh, come on over to Wongo and we'll you know and leverage that community too. Um, if I may, um, as like an entrepreneur, right? Like as a person who's started a business and raised millions of dollars, like for my company, you know, like I think it's important to also say I graduated from college at 25 years old, right? Because I was in the military, like while I was in college, even after I got out, I was working a full-time job and a part-time job and going to school at full-time because that's the path I had to walk, right? And there's, it, like, like as was said, it's never too late and there's absolutely like no shame in having to walk your path, right? Because if that's what it is, that's what you have to do. And once you get there, no one can ever take that away from you, right? And like, it's not like people look at me like right now as like where I come from or like, like, like the lowest point I was at. What they look at are the things I've done, right? And as, and as long as you keep that in mind, that's the only thing that's ever going to matter. Uh, my second question is, uh, what's your best advice for graduating seniors who are getting ready to head off to college when we're in the middle of a pandemic and are not sure what college campuses or courses will look like and how can they mentally prepare for this? Yeah, that is a great question, a million dollar question and one that I think we're asking ourselves as we're entering into, you know, a summer with uh, seniors graduating and, and students going into their second year, like that's a, that's a big question for everybody right now. And I think like there's some technical things that I, I would say like, you know, staying in the know and making sure you 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 have the information is always going to make you feel more prepared regardless of what it looks like so 
like log on to your student portal. If you don't know how, reach out to them to find out and get those things. Check your, your email. You, you actually, if you've already been accepted to your schools, you guys all have emails sitting in that inbox right now, I, I guarantee you. And so like log on to that, check to see what's going on. See if you've had any like flags for financial verification or anything. Like there's just so many things that could be, could be in that inbox already. And so one small thing I'd say is like, stay in the know, find out what's going on, ask questions, read and log on to all the portals that you have. So you're up to date. And so you, you at least have the information um, that, that, that'll help make things a little bit easier. Um, I think the second part uh, is the thing that, that I have been talking to students about and, and talking to uh, my, my kids too, because I have, uh, he is going to be a freshman in high school uh, starting in the fall and even just thinking about thinking about that and what that means and one of the things that um, that I think is like for you to start envisioning like like what it might look like if like worst case we are remote for a semester right or or something along those lines what are what are the things that you already know about yourself as a student what do you what do you know you need to be successful what might that be um, you know, like, and, and then create those conditions in your home. So if it's like, you know that you need a space that is yours and um, it's gotta be quiet or you need it to be a certain way or you need to have your things in a certain way, like spend the time this summer thinking about that. Think about what it is you need to be successful as a student and then make those things happen. It might not be perfect, might not have like, you know, all the bows um, and whistles or have every supply that you've ever wanted, but, make sure that you're thinking about and like envisioning what that might look like and then try to try to prepare for it and then make sure that you're thinking about what are the things that you could actually do um, to prepare so that you are set up for success so that you're set up to be the best student that you can be regardless of you know for in person or if we're on virtually um, whatever that might look like and and just try your best to to, to do whatever you can do now and envision what that might look like um, and, uh, and, and create the space that you need um, where you are so that you can, you can kind of like rise to that challenge. And like we we're saying that path can look many, many different ways, could be online, could be in person, could look, could, could be a lot of different things. But the point, um, the bottom line is really going to be making sure that you have kind of like thought through and that you spend time knowing what it means for you as a student to be successful and what does that look like? What, is, what do you need around you to be successful? And then like doing whatever you can to ensure that you're making that happen in your space, wherever you are at home or on campus, making sure that you're doing that so that you are really setting yourself up for success and like equipping yourself with everything that you need uh, to be successful and make it a great first semester. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Now I'll turn it over back to you, Madam Treasurer. All right. Thank you so much. This has um, certainly been a great hour that we've been able to spend with each other. I just want to really um, thank Ms. Taylor, Mr. Rogers, and um, I'll also say um, Mr. Smith and Ms. Howard for the information that you all have provided that I believe is some real, really helpful advice for our young people who are either heading to college or planning, to, planning for college or really still trying to figure out exactly what the next steps will be in college. So we're grateful to you all for your time on today. And I think I speak for all of us on the line when I say that Tyler, Abel, Ayana, and Yovani truly represent the spirit of our city and our communities, and we can't wait to see what you accomplish, not just in college, but even beyond that. And so certainly I believe you're all going to be change makers that we need, and you make us so proud. And um, as we conclude, I, I quickly want to remind everyone that is joining us that um, you can find a wealth of resources for navigating economic challenges during this pandemic at chicagocitytreasurer.com. Certainly, we know that this pandemic has turned our economy upside down, 
many people's lives and livelihoods, and we are working tirelessly to ensure that Chicagoans have access to information about available loan funds and resources around unemployment, food, secu food security resources, child care, student loans, and paying bills. Also, um, for information as to what we're doing in the treasurer's office, such as any our webinar on this afternoon, we have webinars that we have throughout the week in the treasurer's office. Um, you might want to sign up for our weekly newsletter because we send out information about events and webinars and other things that are going on. And certainly you can sign up through chicagocitytreasurer.com as well. And on this coming Monday, we're gonna have Money Mondays with Melissa. So we're gonna talk about some great resources that are available to residents as well as small businesses. Um, at this time, I just want to say, um, as we go to conclude, just really good afternoon to everyone, good day. We pray that everyone will stay safe. Um, we are grateful to have our youth with us on this afternoon, and we want you all to stay safe. We know that there are so many uncertainties at this time, but um, we are confident that we all will get through this. And until